Today we're going to compute for the confidence interval for population proportion. Now for computing for the confidence interval for population proportion, it's pretty much the same as the population mean. The major difference is the conditions that we need to satisfy. For our first condition, the sample should still be random. And for normality, we need to satisfy the rule of thumb number two, which is NP greater than 10 and NQ greater than 10. And then for independence, we need to have big N should be greater than or equal to 10 times your sample size. And if all three conditions are satisfied, we'll be able to trust our computation because we have satisfied our condition. Now, if we satisfy the condition, we're ready to use the formula in finding the interval of our population parameter. And here, our um, formula will be p hat plus or minus z star times the square root of pq all over n. Now, the Harvard School of Public Health survey found that 2,486 of a, of a sample of 10,904 college undergraduates said that they had engaged in binge drinking. From the randomly selected sample, estimate the true proportion of college students who engage in binge drinking at 99% confidence level. Now, to c conduct our... Uh, confidence interval procedure, the first step is to list down all the values that we will need in our formula. And in this word problem, our sample size is at 10,904. Our p hat can be derived by dividing 2,486 by 10,904, which will give us 0.228. So this will be our p hat for our formula in the confidence interval. And our q is just the complement of your p hat, so it's 0.772. So these are the values given in the word problem. Now let's see if the conditions are satisfied. For step number two, we know that the sample is randomly selected. And for number two, we need to satisfy the rule of thumb number two, which is np greater than 10 and nq greater than 10. And using n, P and Q were able to satisfy the second conditions, so let's move on to our third conditions of independence, which is big N should be greater than 10 times your sample size. And since big N is all the undergraduate students, which is most likely greater than 10 times 10,904, therefore step number two is finished and we satisfied all three conditions for this particular confidence interval problem. Now for step number three, we're going to find our critical value. Now the critical value is pretty much the same as finding it from the population mean. So we have z star of 99% confidence level, which 1 minus c all over 2. And using the formula, we'll get 0 0.005, which we will use for our z star, which we can find using our calculator or our, our z table in our book. So z star of 0 0.99 will give us 2.576. Now for step number four, we're ready to compute for the confidence interval using our formula, which is p hat plus or minus z star square root of p q all over n. So here are the values that we will need for our formula. We have our n, p hat, q, and z star. By direct substitution, we'll have 0.228 plus or minus 2.576 times the standard error, which is the square root of 0.228 times 0.772 all over 10,904. And from here, we'll multiply it with our z star or our critical value, which is 2.576 times 0 0.0040, giving us a margin of error of 0 0.0103. Now, our confidence interval from our formula will be 0.2176 and 0.2383. Now in our illustration, this is our 99% confidence level and our true population proportion is in between the range 21.76% and 23.83%. So for our step number five, our conclusion will be with a repeated sample of 11,000 undergraduate students, we are 99% confident that the true proportion of college students who engage in binge drinking is between 22% and 24%. Now let's find out the minimum number of sample size we need when we're conducting confidence interval 
for our population proportion. So this is our margin of error, which should be less than or equal to the, our maximum error. If we derive the formula in finding the sample size, we'll have a formula of n greater than or equal to the square of z star times the square root of pq all over e. So let's use this formula in our word problem. Now, Emily's scrapbooking business intends to survey customers about their new mobile application. On her customer satisf satisfaction survey, she decides that she wants the estimate to be within 3% at a 95% confidence level. Since Emily has no idea of the true proportion of satisfied customers, she decided to use p hat of 0.50. Now let's determine the sample size she needs to carry out her survey. Now the first step is to find all the values that we will need for our formula. So we need our Z star, our P, Q, and E. And in the word problem, they are all given. Z star of 0.95, after computing it, will be 1.96. Our P hat is equal to 0.5, and its complement, which is our Q, is also 0.5. The maximum error is at 0 0.03, which is here in this problem. So now we're ready to compute for our minimum sample size for this word problem. So Emily needs n greater than or equal to 1.96 times the square root of 0.5 times 0.5 all over 0 0.03 square, which gives us n greater than or equal to 1067.11. So Emily's minimum sample size that she will need for her survey will be 1068 customers. And that's how we find our minimum um, sample size at a given confidence level.